Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part eight of my time series forecasting tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I am going to cover vector autoregressions. I'm going to show you how to convert data into its stationary form and then invert it back into its original form. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so here we are, and everything here is available on GitHub. There is a link in the description. Here is everything we are importing. Of course, we're not going to use all of it, but I just decided to just use the same imports for every video so you know what's going on. Just make sure you do not miss this part right here, which is the augmented Dicky Fuller. And also, we are going to use a previously created function in a past video. So you can pause your screen to go and copy all that stuff down, or like I said, get everything from GitHub. Okay, so vector autoregressive models are going to be used when you want to predict multiple time series using only one model. And this is going to differ what we have been focused on for the last couple videos, which is ARIMA, in that we will have to check for stationarity on our own, convert, and we will have to then invert backwards from that stationary form into an original form. We're going to be using AIC to measure our model. And as the model increases in complexity, it will get more accurate up to a point. And then at that point, as we've talked about previously, AIC will start to punish our model because of its overall complexity. All right, so I'm going to be using some GDP data and I'm going to be analyzing whether two things affect GDP in the United States. So here is the data we will be using. Everything is real. So here is the GDP. Then we're going to have the number of business applications, new businesses formed, and overall productivity of citizens. And we're going to just look and see if either one of these affect GDP growth. All right, so we went and got that data. We indexed based off of date and everything, all the stuff that you're used to. Just wanted to let you know from this point on, basically everything is going to be deep learning in regards to analyzing time series. So there'll be a little bit of a brief pause between this video and the next one as I mainly set up a new system to do all of my deep learning. So what I'm gonna say here is that I want to go and start getting data where the indexes are less than 2023 3-31 because some weird stuff happened you may have heard about and I want to sort of avoid that. Then I'm going to go GDP DF and I'm going to go and drop any data, any frames that are empty or cells I guess I should say. Then I'm going to need to set my frequency for this data. And I'm going to have this be as frequency and I'm going to set it for quarterly. And we can come in here and say GDP, DF and GDP and plot this. And we can say that we want a legend and set that to true and figure size is going to be 16 by 8. And our real question here is going to be whether uh, GDP is affected by new business creation or productivity or neither. And we're going to basically just take a look at this and see which works. And whenever we go and try to model this or plot this out, everything is using different numbers. So what I'm going to do is just get a multiple of those different numbers so that we can go and show all of our data at based roughly the same size on the screen. And I just know I'm going to type some names incorrectly here, so pardon that mistake. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing for productivity. So just change this to productivity and do the same here. And finally there, the multiple here is going to be 180. And let's run this. And look at that, I didn't make any mistakes. So there you can see the GDP in blue. You can see the new business applications in orange. And you can see productivity in green. And it looks like 
the you know they're basically following GDP in different ways and so we'll analyze it to see which is the most useful for modeling our future predictions. Now one problem here is we need to make our data stationary so oh, I am going to do that and not going to be any quick ways of doing it and also we're going to then have to invert it back to its original form. So difference and difference is how we go and get the difference for our entire GDP data frame. And we can go and take a look at what that looks like. So there you go. This is the differenced form of our data frame. And we want to go in and delete the values where we have NAN. And we'll do that with drop NA, of course. And then we can come in and plot this data. So this is going to be GDP diff data frame and this will be GDP and plot and the legend is going to be true and then we can take a look at it and see if it looks like it has been converted to a stationary form and then we can use Dickey Fuller to make certain it has been converted to its stationary form. And I can just go and copy this part right here, paste that in there, change this to biz apps, and it's just business applications, that's what that stands for. And then we're also going to have productivity, which I abbreviated. And then, well, we can run this, and there you can see that it's looking stationary, and but we need to check whether it look whether it actually is stationary or not. We could say ADF test and we can go and grab this guy right here paste that inside of there and then just go and copy this whole entire thing and do business applications and productivity and we can see that this is under 0.05 right here looks good way under 0.05 and extremely under 0.05 so there we are everything is stationary and we are happy now I'm going to come in and tr train and test our data. So I'll go diff and let's see how big this is. So 183 is the total number of data points we are working with. I'll say train df is equal to GDP and diff data frame and 80% of that is 146 and our testing is going to just be take this and we'll go from 146 up to the end now auto arima isn't going to work for vector auto regression so what we're going to have to do is find p by checking for the lowest value in aic on our own so model and i'm going to say var train df and then i'm just going to try a couple lags so I'm going to say, and you should know what lags means. It's just looking at past data. All right. And let's just go 1.8 like that. And then we'll see whatever our results are. So I'll say mod fit and throw the different values of P inside of there. And then we can come in and we can go and print this out and make our decisions based off of whatever our results are. So AIC. And how we get that is go and get our results and call AIC on it. And if we run this, looks like our best results are going to be with the very first one. So that looks good. So we can go results is equal to mod fit and one. And then we can go and get our results and see the results for all of the pieces of data. And if we run that, Let's see what's going on here. Mainly, I'm just going to come down here to the very bottom. You can go and look at all this stuff. But what I'm really interested in is right here. And we can see that surprisingly enough, even though business applications looked like it matched up better with GDP than productivity, actually productivity matches up with GDP better. So not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but definitely more than new business applications. So that's what we will focus on here. We can come in here and go and plot these results. So plot, 
and throw a semicolon on there so it only does it once. And you can see there's the GDP, there's the business applications, and there is productivity. And now we're going to go and start forecasting. Now, whenever we're forecasting, what we're going to do is define how many steps ahead to forecast. And we can also pass an array with P, the lag order, which is going to be K, and the number of time series, which is going to be GDP and productivity. So let's go and form our forecast results equal to and forecast and GDP difference data frame and convert this to NumPy with values and we'll go negative one to our ends and let's say that we want to pass in four values here and then say which is this is quarterly data so it'd be like a year and we can say plot forecast four and you can see there is the forecasts that are all printed out on the screen along with a standard deviation error amount so pretty neat stuff all right and if we want to go and just look at gdp diff and data frame we can go and look at that data as well now we're going to be able to come in here and actually set up our data frame for forecasting data so what I want to do is continue on with our indexes. I'm going to leave you with a little bit of homework in this one because I'm certain that you can handle it. So where are we going to go? Well, the very next month is going to be, well, actually it's the quarter, which is going to end at the end of June. So this is going to be the next piece of data that we're, where we would be storing this. And I am going to get four more quarters because that's what I asked for and the frequency in this situation is going to be Q deck and there we are and then we can say forecast data frame create a new one and say PD data data frame pass it in our forecast results and set up the new index using our index date times that we just plugged in there or just created and the columns can be let's just say like this is going to be forecast gdp and forecast biz apps and forecast productivity whoops productivity and we can say forecast df and there is all of our extra data that we have inside of there or our forecast data anyway now what we need to do is come in and actually undo the difference so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a generic thing here so that you can see the process of undoing a difference in a very easy to understand way and then you just apply it to your own and then i'll leave I'll show you how to do it once and then I'll leave the rest for homework for you. Okay. So what we're going to do here is just generate some random data. Let's say we want random int 0, 10, and we'll get five of those. And then what we're going to do in our next column is we are going to say that we want to get the difference of that original column. So df that and get the difference. This is exactly what I did with the data already. And we can see that if we go and print this out, this is what we have. So what we want to do is convert this back to A. How do we do that? Well, x and x diff is going to be equal to, let's go and do a slice based off of this diff different columns of data. So a and we're going to get all of the data here because there's data in all of the rows but in b there isn't so we just have to skip that part so b like that and skip the first one so we put a one in there because this is zero indexed then let's go and bring them together get it invert it from being in its original 
difference form. And how we do that is use a NumPy function here that's going to stack our slices along their first axes. And we'll say x and x diff. And then we do a cumulative sum on them, which is basically the opposite of difference. And let's say that we want to convert these into floats and we print it. And you can see that yes, indeed, we got the difference and then we inverted back to its original form. So basically all we need to do is do that exact same thing with our data that we already have. So I'm just gonna use pretty much the same exact type of thing here. Some things will change slightly though. All right, so I'll paste this in here. And this is going to be GDP data frame. And this is of course GDP. And again, we're gonna start from the top because we have all the data in this part. Well, this is actually going to be GDP difference. Remember I put it in a different data frame, still going to be called GDP. And this is going to start from the third, so two in that situation. And then what we need to do is I'm going to go create another data frame. Let's call this GDP, like the new GDP is equal to. And what I need to do here is just cumulatively sum the values and then stack the slices to eliminate the differences, just like we did before. So PD data frame and P or underscore X X difference and cumulative sum and then as type and we'll do float on this as well even though it's gonna distort the data just a little bit but I'm okay with that all right GDP DF and then we need to append to this undifferenced data, all of our new data, which is going to be our forecasted data, data frame. And then we need to do a cumulative sum on that as well. So cumulative sum like this, and then we can go and plot it and see if it looks like it makes sense as a prediction of GDP. And we'll do fig size equal to 16 8 run it something's wrong oh i know what i did like that boom and yes it looks like a pretty good prediction so we went from our original gdp and to our predicted gdp all right guys whole bunch of stuff deep learnings coming up next and more and more complicated things like always please leave your questions and comments down below otherwise till next time